We dream of a future where diseases are no longer a life sentence, where our beautiful environment is pristine and where we have a thriving economy. But in order to achieve this exciting new future for New Zealand, we need methods to get us there. Methods such as synthetic biology. So what is synthetic biology? Synthetic biology is the engineering of life. DNA is the genetic code which instructs the cell what to do. And like a computer code, it can be programmed. Like traditional engineering, synthetic biology uses standard parts which fit together to serve a useful function. Parts are selected and the genetic code is compiled on a computer. This is printed in a DNA printer and inserted into an organism, such as bacteria, yeast or algae. The synthetic DNA instructs the cells to carry out the program functions. To help you understand the process of designing a microbe, I will show you this E. coli I designed. So this part here is what is known as a kill switch, meaning that if something did go wrong anywhere along the process with the application of a chemical called coal E7, this E. coli would die instantly. This part here makes the E. coli function as a nickel and cobalt biofilter capable of removing these from our environment. Like my kill switch, there are other possible safety measures, such as preventing these microbes from reproducing or programming them to only survive in certain um, concentrations of chemicals, preventing environmental contamination. With such small microbes, but such unlimited proteins, the potential for these um, engineered microbes to benefit New Zealand is very big. Socially, Synthetic biology could completely transform the way we prevent, diagnose and treat illnesses. Every year, 25,000 New Zealanders are diagnosed with cancer, affecting these people, their whānau and communities. But current treatments such as radiation and chemotherapy also target healthy cells, resulting in dangerous side effects such as a reduced immune system. But we could improve this using synthetic biology. We could engineer what is known as a logic circuit inside microbes, which is a circuit that responds to different factors. We could design them to, be, um, to take like, note of the microRNA fingerprint of cancer cells, which is what is wrong with cancer cells that makes them divide. And only when this fingerprint is detected, induce apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, as you can see up the top. Um, this treatment results in only the cancer cells being destroyed, leaving healthy cells unharmed, thus eliminating side effects. Also, these engineered microbes could resemble bacteria already found inside us, preventing an immune response. Research is already being conducted here. A team from MIT designed a logic circuit which successfully identified only cervical cancer cells from the surrounding tissue. And another study at UCSF designed E. coli to silence a key colon cancer gene, inhibiting tumor growth. Also, synthetic biology could change the way that we detect, manage, and diagnose illnesses. We could design microbes to live inside people at high risk for disease and sense the levels of certain chemicals in their bloodstream. When these chemicals are at certain stages, such as in, um, hinting that disease could be possible, these um, microbes could change colour or glow or any other indication that we can see instantly to know that something is up and they can see their doctor. Um, this would mean that we have much earlier illness detection, thus much earlier treatment. And the, more, the earlier treatment is, the more likely that the treatment will be effective. This is especially important in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease because in order to develop cures, we need to be able to target the harmful proteins before they reach clinical levels. Or we could design microbes that could live inside people with diabetes, monitor their blood sugar levels for them, and secrete insulin when it is needed, <coughs> improving their quality of life. Another potential for synthetic biology is in vaccine development. Traditional synthesis of vaccines is a very long process, but we could use synthetic biology to speed it up. At the J. Craig Venter Institute, they designed a vaccine for a new strand of influenza in five days by synthetic biology, with the fastest traditional method taking over four months. With the increasing urbanisation and interconnectedness of our country and the world, 
epidemics are spreading faster. To combat these rapidly spreading epidemics, we need our vaccines to be created much, much faster. Similarly, the traditional method of producing drugs is a very long and difficult process due to the needed high temperatures, high pressures and expensive catalysts. But most of these drugs are created based on organisms already. We can take these genes and use them to program microbes to produce these drugs easily and cheaply. For example, the anti-malarial drug artemisinin is now being produced in engineered microbes because it is cheaper and more sustainable. Superbugs are a big threat to our country. They are bacteria that build a biofilm around themselves, protecting themselves against antibiotics. However, they can be destroyed using synthetic biology. We can program microbes to target the bacterial biofilm that they use to protect themselves and dissolve it, allowing our antibiotics to have effect once more. Um, the IGEM competition, or International Genetically Engineered Machines competition, brings together teams of students to design microbes to fix problems. This year's Oxford team are designing a microbe that can dissolve the bacterial biofilm, making them vulnerable to antibiotics. And a team from MIT successfully designed microbes that killed 99.9997% of an antibiotic resistant bacteria. In the near future, superbugs will result in New Zealanders dying from currently easily treatable illnesses. If we are to prevent this, we need to destroy superbugs, and synthetic biology enables this. So synthetic biology could not just improve our health, but also the health of our environment. We brand ourselves as 100% pure, clean and green, with our pristine mountains and crystal clear rivers that bring um, tourists to our country to see these lands. But here's our problem. Our agricultural industry uses excessive amounts of nitrogen fertilizers, which is polluting our environment and contaminating our waterways. Over half of New Zealand's rivers are deemed unsafe for swimming. But we could use synthetic biology to fix this problem. We could engineer microbes that can live in the soil and um, extract nitrogen from the air, turning it into compounds such as ammonium nitrate, a common fertilizer. These microbes would monitor nitrogen levels in the soil, excreting the um, fertilizers only when they are needed, which limits the nitrogen pollution we are putting into our waterways, saving both of our biggest industries, agriculture and tourism. Or um, we have a big problem with plastic in New Zealand. Um, it, globally, the amount of plastic in our oceans is at five trillion pieces. That's an enormous number to try and picture. So instead, think of it this way. Five trillion seconds ago, the first Homo sapiens were in Africa. Now, all of this plastic in our oceans is killing wildlife, including in New Zealand, our beloved blue penguins, Maui's and Hector's dolphins, and the New Zealand sea lion. But we can engineer um, bacteria to break down this plastic, saving our oceans. A number of species of bacteria, such as the one pictured there, already contain genes um, that can break down plastics in the sea, such as um, polyethylene of plastic bags, to polyurethane, which is in many common furniture items, to PVC of our pipes. So we can design microbes that can break down this plastic, preventing environmental contamination. Similarly, New Zealand is at big risk from oil spills. We have deep sea oil drilling and many ships coming into our ports, resulting in great potential for disasters, such as the arena. However, it is a relief to know that synthetic biology can help us here. Similarly to the plastics, we already have microbes that can break down petroleum hydrocarbons in marine environments, but currently these aren't at high enough levels. What we can do using synthetic biology is combine these genes and augment them using promoters so that we can break down um, the oil, preventing a disaster if oil spills occur. So the final major area for synthetic biology to improve New Zealand is in biofuels. Fossil fuels are unsustainable due to their contributions to carbon dioxide levels and climate change. Um, rising sea levels due to the climate change um, melting ice is a major problem for New Zealand because 65% of our population live within five kilometers of the shore. However, we can fix this using synthetic biology. 
what happens in the process of photosynthesis, which already occurs in many different organisms, is that sunlight and water are combined with um, carbon dioxide to produce glucose. So, using synthetic biology, we could engineer algae to um, take this carbon dioxide pollution, combining it with wastewater, which also produces the nutrients the algae need, and turn it into glucose. They can then can turn this glucose into pyruvic acid. And here's where synthetic biology comes in. Through engineered genes, we can direct the metabolic pathways that you can see on the screen here to turn this pyruvic acid into isobutanol, a fuel. Isobutanol combusts with more energy than other biofuels, is compatible with our current fuel infrastructure, and is currently being trialled by the US Coast Guard with very promising results. So today you've learned that synthetic biology is the engineering of microbes. This can be used to provide extensive benefits to New Zealand. Socially, we have much better disease detection, um, treatment, and also even prevention. Um, we have faster vaccine development, we have better drug synthesis, we have better um, cancer treatments, and we can fight superbugs. Um, economically, we have a huge new industry um, the biotechnology industry is predicted to be worth one third of the global economy by 2050. So an investment in such an area could provide great potential for New Zealand. And environmentally, we have the potential cleanup of disasters such as the plastic in our oceans and oil spills. And if the, um, we can fix an issue key to New Zealand, which is how to balance our agriculture and our tourism industries. So today, I'd like to leave you with a quote, which is included in the DNA of the first ever synthetic organism. It reads, see things not as they are, but as they might be. There are many challenges that are facing New Zealand, but we can use synthetic biology to try and fix these problems. If we want to create this exciting new future, then we need the methods to shape it. I ore a te tuatara, ka patu ki waho. A problem is solved, by continuing to find solutions. And solutions to many of New Zealand's problems can be found in synthetic biology. It really is engineering the future. Thank you. Um, thanks, Jennifer. Did you put any thought into the unintended consequences, perhaps, of unleashing new forms of life into the world? Yes, I put quite a lot of thought into that. Um, for example, if we're talking about releasing them into such as cleaning up plastics or oil spills, what you can do to prevent this is you can um, design these organisms to only be able to metabolise the thing you want. So, for example, if we're using them to clean up oil spills, we allow them to only be able to feed off hydrocarbons, meaning that once that oil spill is cleaned up, these organisms will be killed, meaning they won't be around afterwards. So it would be a kind of fix in the short term, get rid of these pollutants, and then these things themselves would disappear. If you use them to deal with superbugs, yes. would you not get another generation of super, super bugs? Probably not. The, the way they break down um, the biofilm that surrounds superbugs is different to the way antibiotics work. So the problem we have is our antibiotics are targeting the bacteria, causing them to create this biofilm to block out the antibiotics. The way these, um, these microbes would work is they um, do what is called as phagocytosis. They engulf the bacteria and break it down inside them. So the chances of bacteria being able to be resistant to that is extremely high. Um, it, in the future, you're saying synthetic biology will be essential? Yes. Um, if you think of what happened when we started doing, um, like taking control of the chemical world, when we started being able to produce drugs, plastics, um, we've taken over the chemical world, the industrial world, the biological world is the next one. They could be seen as techno fixes. I wouldn't say techno fixes, I would say more because life form is like everywhere around us, being able to control that is what will take our world into the future. Given New Zealand's general antipathy towards genetic modification, what do you think the chances are that we'll take this on? I think New Zealand's um, dislike of genetic modification is an interesting thing, considering that if we are using stuff like this, we are um, protecting our environment, which is something that is key to New Zealanders. 
um, I think a lot of the problem with GE, because I've been doing a lot of research into this, is all of the negative um, information that's been let out about it, and also the fact that GE is being released into the environment without things like kill switches, without ways of getting rid of these organisms, and that's where the problem stems. I think with the correct, um, like the correct teaching, and also the correct ways of preventing them becoming a disaster in their own right, and with all of the benefits to New Zealand, I think we could get around this. Thank you. Thank you.